timing of this is a little bit intriguing because you would think maybe they would play out the rest of the season. Heck, if Texas goes on a tear and wins the Big 12 and plays for a national title, they win a national title because Quinn you are still coming back because at that point, his draft stock is probably booming. But sounds like he's pretty settled on it. Sounds like he maybe has the intel he needs to make this decision. And at a broad strokes perspective, like this makes a lot of sense because for Quinn Ewers, the whole deal with where he's at right now as a collegiate quarterback is to try and position himself as much as possible to be in the best spot possible for when it comes time for his name to be called in the NFL draft. And you look at this draft class, man, like it's, it's pretty loaded. You got Caleb Williams, you got Drake May, but then also you got Jaden Daniels, who's been putting on a clinic this season, probably should win the Heisman Trophy. Michael Penix Jr., Bo Nix, Carson Beck may come out. Like, I, like th this, this class is loaded. And so if you're Quinn Ewers, you're saying, okay, well, I didn't get to really show my stuff either this season. And you pair that with how loaded this draft class is, you wait one more cycle and maybe he, maybe he's the first quarterback off the board. I don't know, but I think that this makes a lot of sense from a, from a, a professional perspective. Now, one more thing to consider here. If you go out and ball in the SEC, if you're Quinn Ewers, Think about the filter that is for scouts to assess Quinn Ewers. Because no knock on the Big 12, but if you're playing against NFL Junior every single Saturday in the SEC and you light it up, I think that would do a lot for his draft stock. So, last thing I'd say, I think it also helps his NFL projections because he's only 20 years old. Like, Quinn Ewers cannot purchase an adult beverage right now. He'll be 21 in March. He left high school early. We forget that a lot. So if he stays another season... By the time he gets drafted, he's older, he's got more game experience, he's more developed. Like, I think as a whole, football is different than the NBA in the sense that, like, youth is not necessarily a good thing when it comes to your professional prospects. You want to have as much game experience, as much development as possible, and Quinn Ewers positioning himself now to do that. So what does it mean for Texas is the next question. Like, first and foremost, y'all hear that? It's the hype train coming down the tracks. It's already at full speed. Typically, it takes, like, a winter to spring to really get it revved up. It is it is full bore right now. That, that hype train in Austin is all the way on and popping, especially with Quinn Ewers coming back. Uh, you cannot put a value on experience at the quarterback position. You just can't do it. Because if Quinn Ewers had decided to go pro, like a lot of us expected him to do at the beginning of the season, you're turning to Malik Murphy or Arch Manning, which either one of those guys would have been first year starting quarterbacks. I understand Malik Murphy started some games this year, but to be the guy going into the season... And to be going into the SEC, it's a difficult task, I think, for either one of those guys to try and manage and live up to. So as a whole, now you go into the SEC with a proven commodity at quarterback. And here's the other thing to consider. Who else comes back with him? Like Jonathan Brooks, according to Pete Thamel, it sounds like he's going to come back for another season after tearing his ACL. And you hate that for him, but you get Ewers and Brooks back. Looking at Adonai Mitchell, and I don't know what his draft stock is in the NFL world, but you would have to imagine seeing his quarterback coming back and a chance to even improve his draft stock even more. Maybe he says, hey, you know what? I'll spend one more year in Austin. I liked how I was used in this offense. And if Xavier Worthy leaves, maybe Adonai Mitchell gets even more targets, even better production. I'm just saying, this could kind of be a snowball effect where it's a thing of, oh, hey, Quinn, you were just coming back? You know what? I could, I could do another year on the 40 acres. I like where this thing is headed. Yeah, maybe I want to go help myself in my draft stock by playing in the SEC and letting scouts see what I have in that department. I think it's a good deal. I think it's a good deal, and I think it's going to be a little bit of a uh, of a chain reaction here in terms of guys that could be on the fringe of leaving, deciding to come back because of Quinn Ewers coming back. Now, here's the thing that all Texas fans are probably asking today, because you're fired up that Quinn Ewers is coming back. You're stoked for the most part because you have someone proven leading you into the SEC. But there's that small check in your spirit of like, hmm, well, what happens now with Arch Manning? Because the law of nature in college football says you cannot keep a three deep stacked quarterback room. And for Malik Murphy, I think it would make a lot of sense if he decided he needed to play. Malik Murphy's waited his turn, been in Austin for a while. Thank you so much, you know, Texas, but I'm going to go and, and try my hand somewhere else. More power to him. I don't think anybody would have an issue if Malik, if Malik Murphy decided to do that. Now, the real question would be, well, what happens to Arch Manning? Because a lot of people were saying the plan was coming in red shirt, Quinn Ewers ball out, go to the league, Arch Manning, your team next year. That was the thought in a lot of circles. I don't know if that was the thought internally at Texas, but on paper makes a lot of sense. So now your question is, well, if he's not going to have that plan come to fruition, does Arch Manning transfer? 
I think it's a fair question, but, but the way that I'm looking at this thing, Arch Manning committed to Texas because of Steve Sarkeesian and quarterback development. Both of those things are still intact at Texas. The reason Arch Manning is at Texas right now, nothing changed about that. Like, if he wanted to play early, there were a lot of schools that Arch Manning, I promise you, could have gone somewhere and started as a true freshman. I don't know if it's somewhere the caliber of a place like a Texas, but that wasn't what the, the end goal was. The end goal for Arch Manning and the Manning camp, you would have to believe, is to position him, similar to Quinn Ewers, in the best possible spot for when it's his time to be drafted in the NFL. And so the way that I'm looking at this, you just have another year now to get developed, to learn from Quinn Ewers, to get more comfortable in the system, more comfortable in college life, another year in a collegiate strength and conditioning program. Like, I think overall, this could be a net positive for Arch Manning. There's the small disappointment of, man, I thought next year was going to be my year. But to be a first-year starting quarterback as a redshirt freshman in the SEC, I'm not saying he couldn't do it. I'm just saying you would have to believe that his odds for success are probably a little bit higher given another year learning, another year in the system, another year developing behind Quinn Ewers. Also, who's to say that he doesn't get a shot next year? Who's to say that Quinn Ewers has some issues staying healthy like we've seen the last couple of seasons? So at the end of the day, I think Arch Manning and his camp are seeing the big picture. And Quinn Ewers coming back for another season shouldn't deter Arch Manning from that end goal and shouldn't deter him from what he wants to achieve at Texas. Everything he came to Texas for is still there. Steve Sarkeesian, quarterback development, that offense, all still intact. So Quinn Ewers coming back, and that is obviously very, very good news for the folks in Austin. And I don't think it's a thing where you trade Quinn Ewers and his year of eligibility for having Arch Manning on your roster. Just my two cents. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.